often operators have a natural tension with executives, especially the more visionary the executive. The natural tension is that the executive appears to be distant and unwilling to read or process information that's being shared, not just in spreadsheet form or really dense ways, but sometimes in the exact format that the executive asked for. And the executive is saying, hey, I really need this. Where is this information? And you're like, I just provided it to you three times within the last two weeks. What, what's not working for you? The executive gets frustrated and the operator gets frustrated. And what I found is that there tends to be a natural disconnect between the executive's uh, goal in identifying the type of information they want to receive and the actual expression that the executive gives. So the executive may say something like, I really need to see how much we're spending on people versus how much we're spending on technology and tools and systems. And the operator goes, okay, I'll go make that. And you go and format a spreadsheet a certain way. And then the executive may say, I want you to tell me every day on Friday in a Slack message. Well, what the executive is actually after, we don't even know in this scenario. I'm not really speaking to the executives today. I want to give the operator a clear playbook to follow to better deliver on the demands of the executive in a way that doesn't cause as much conflict and doesn't cause as much rework. Here's the main method. When the executive makes a demand or says they didn't receive something, let's go ahead and do the humble thing as a communicator and make the assumption that our communication didn't land. This is the key ingredient to becoming a better communicator. We have to always say that even if we expressed, if the expression didn't get received, then it didn't land. And we've got to try to find another way. That's the first thing we have to do. So step one, embrace. Communication is our responsibility to land. Now, step two is to follow the ask or the pressure with more curiosity than commitment. I was just working with a client who the executive and operator were going back and forth about many things right in front of me around spreadsheets and different formats and uh, information requests. And the executive made one of these statements like, I need this. And the operator thought in their brain, oh my gosh, if I do that, there's all this effort that I have to do, all this rejiggering I have to do. And the executive is just going to look at it then and say, it's not good enough then. And they're going to create more work for me. What the operator wasn't doing is the second thing you need to do, which is to follow with curiosity without commitment. So instead of saying, here's how I will create this thing that you want, this new information you want, breaking down people versus technology expenses, we need to ask the question, what decisions are you trying to make as an executive with that information? When I stepped in and showed the operator how to ask that question, then the executive suddenly said, well, I'm trying to figure out my guardrails right now for gross margin and whether or not we should be investing in new technology, but maybe we need to take on that technology cost because it's going to create more revenue or margin in the future. That's what I'm trying to do. Well, that changed the conversation completely because it turns out the operator didn't need to go calculate operations budgets by technology spend and people spend a different way than was already being calculated and had already been reported. Instead, the operator has a chance to provide extreme value to the executive by helping them make those decisions. And we just completely shifted the conversation to that. So the habit that I'd like you to adopt, and this works, I've used it many times in my role as a COO and as an operator to high level executives is when the executive says they need something or want something and it must be a certain way, we don't have to commit to action right then. We can say, I'll think about it. I'll get it the way you need, whatever. But we're going to ask the curious question of what are you trying to do with that information? And when we ask that well, and we might have to say, what else? What else? A few times. We're going to end up with a list that all of a sudden went from confusing and frustrating to quite achievable, but something that we might format in a different way than the executive has imagined or explained, because now we're fueling the decisions that they're trying to make rather than fueling the inputs that they think they need in order to make those decisions.